It was summer, just an ordinary morning, or so I thought. I had turned seven just a day ago. On the 24th, when I stepped into the kitchen, I saw my grandmother in an awkward position on the couch near the kitchen area. I started screaming for her to wake up. It was around six in the morning, but she usually rose at five. She didn't move or respond to my calls. I was scared and shook her, tears welling in my eyes because I knew something was wrong. I noticed she used the candles from my birthday cake, but I didn't understand why until later. I had a feeling I wouldn't be able to wake her again, that she would sleep forever. It was a strange sensation, something I'd never experienced before. Confused about what was happening, I tried to devise a plan to bring my parents into the kitchen without alarming them. I went to my parents' bedroom, asking my dad to make me breakfast because I was hungry. It was an odd request, since I usually resisted breakfast. He looked surprised, but agreed. I led him to the kitchen, pretending to be hungry, just to get him there. As he entered the room where my grandma lay, he greeted her without realizing she hadn't responded. He was too groggy to notice. When I asked why Granny wasn't awake, he tried to rouse her, as I had, but to no avail. He called for my mom, who came to the kitchen and exclaimed, Oh dear, she's cold. At that moment, I knew she was gone, but I couldn't explain how or why. My parents and grandpa, who arrived before the ambulance, didn't realize I had witnessed everything without understanding. After 40 minutes of attempts by paramedics, they sadly declared, We're sorry, there's nothing we can do here. She's dead. It was the first time I'd heard the word, dead, and its meaning eluded me. My mom broke down, and my dad and grandpa took me to my room, leaving me feeling like I'd done something wrong. I want to mention that I was really close to my granny, and I used to spend a lot of time with her teaching me to write, math, foreign languages, and lots of other stuff. I still miss her, and I will always do. Throughout that day, while my family was busy making calls and receiving visitors, I felt lost and scared. That evening, my mom explained death to me and why Grandma had passed away, shedding some light on the situation, but I remained frightened and unsettled. Growing up as a Christian, I recall a time when it was customary to keep the body of the deceased at home for three days. I remember those three nights vividly, playing around the coffin and spending time in the company of relatives. However, I also recall the fear and anxiety that came with it, especially when I heard people speak of death and the deceased in a negative light. It was an experience that I could not have imagined having as a child, but it had a lasting impact on me. I was traumatized by the funeral and the mourning process. The sky was crying as if it shared our pain and I saw my family in a state of grief that I had never seen before. The worst part was when I returned home and I felt like someone was following me and that I was never safe again. I saw scary faces and creatures on the walls and they would disappear only when I turned on the lights. I was afraid of the dark and had to sleep with the lights and television on. I was a prisoner of my mind and could not escape the fear. After her burial, the nights became terrifying. Every step down the dark hallway from my room to the bathroom felt haunted. I saw eerie faces and creatures on the wall disappearing when the lights came on. Sometimes they lingered, even with the lights blazing, making it more horrifying. I confided in my dad about my fears and he took me to a priest. For a brief time, I felt better, but the nightmares persisted. I became afraid of my own shadow, constantly on edge, sleeping only with lights and the TV on. At nine, I stumbled upon an occultism book that intrigued me, sparking countless questions. I even attempted to communicate with my grandma's spirit through a spiritual ritual, hoping for answers. It didn't go as planned and left me even more frightened. I tried everything to overcome my fear including attempting to invoke my grandmother's spirit through a spiritism ritual, but nothing helped. 
I felt desperate until I accepted my faith and gained more knowledge about the subject. I embraced my dark side and tried to live comfortably with it. I realized that it is crucial to embrace who you are and not run from your fears. As a teen, I finally understood no ritual could resurrect what was gone. But in grappling with forces beyond my comprehension, I realized one truth. Darkness illuminates light. Now I channel once tormenting shadows into my writing, crafting chilling tales that leave readers peering warily into the gloom long after. In each story, I honor grandma's memory, using remembered warmth as a torch against the dark unknown she traversed before me. And through such tales, her whispered legacy touches countless more lives than one ordinary woman could alone. Perhaps that is what death robbed us, but life ultimately returned. I still have the same paranormal capacities and thoughts that scare me sometimes, but my attitude towards them has changed. My advice to others is to embrace their fears and accept themselves for who they are. Thanks for letting me share my personal story with you guys. More to come. Don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to the channel for me. Keep it creepy and see you next time.